Steve Sipple. Hut, hut, hike! The conversation gets even more uncomfortable, okay? Omaha! <laughs> Steve Sipple on The Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. Ah, the sweet sounds of Seether. Bring us in, Stephen M. Sipple of HuskerOnline.com. Sipple, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm. I'm going to say good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm. I'm glad you said that. I'm. I'm good. I'm pretty good. Good. Got a lot to talk about. Yeah, I think so. How's How's the week been? It's been all right. I mean, the day right now. You're a golfer, aren't you? I am a golfer. I haven't golfed yet this year, though. To be a good day, I I just noticed the wind's not blowing very hard. Yeah, well, I'll be I'll be broadcasting a baseball game tonight, so that's uh, that's like just as good for me. Oh yes, that is good. Yeah, that is good. Okay, well, simple. What have what what, what do you know? What have you come to realize this week? What, what are some what are some truths that we now know? I don't know. Are you? What, what are we talking about? I don't know. I don't know. I just. I want to know how you unpack this entire thing. This entire thing with Trev Albert. Yes. Um. Oh, I. I mean, as I size it up, I mean, I think Nebraska is probably better off without him. Um, wow. Why is that? Oh, I mean, it, I think it, his he wasn't loyal. Clearly. Um, Two and a half years would suggest that he wasn't loyal, and you know, you. I, I think it's. I mean, I think it's good to be ambitious, um, and that's all that. But um, you can be ambitious and still have integrity. Um, so, I mean, that's how I. I, I it kind of hit me yesterday. I didn't. And then, and then reading the reasons. For leaving, there was no smoking gun or anything. No, I mean, no, there was not. Just, yeah, he just left for, you know, for personal because <laughs> he thinks it's, it's personally beneficial to him and turned his back on a lot of people that had thought that he was loyal. And that's it yeah, happens a lot in the world. So I, it's not like I mean I don't I'm not I don't it sounds like I'm being really judgmental. I don't think I am. It's very common, um, and I thought maybe. Trev was a little different, and he wasn't. So now you move on to the next guy, and hope he wants to be here. I don't know if that. Um, I don't know if that means though that they that they are better off without him. Like, are are you? Oh, I do. Are you one of those people who are sort of like re re tracking and rethinking about his entire time here now, just because of kind of how this how this finished off? Which I which I agree with you on that part. Like, it's it's a really really tough pill to swallow, and it definitely you know changes how we look at him to a certain extent, but like, I still think he was a pretty good athletic director. I guess, I mean, a very limited, limited scope. Um, he made a good hire, I think, although that's to be determined on that rule, you know, his, his vision for, you know, when you're talking about something like volleyball day for Nebraska, I think that was, you give him a lot of credit for something like that. And you know, Trevor's a good, he's a good AD. He's, I mean, listen, I'm not, this is no commentary on Trev's ability to lead a department. Uh, it's no commentary on Trev's grasp of the national scene and right. ability to work, his ability to navigate a very difficult environment. He's an extremely charismatic guy. He's an incredibly good salesman. Uh, he sells his vision incredibly well. He'll be very successful. Uh, no, I mean, he'll, all those things. But, you know, I think he has a, probably a pretty grand vision for himself. And that didn't include Nebraska. And that's fine. Uh, it's not, I mean, it's, it's not really fine. And then it, he was only here for two and a half years. And it kind of led us to believe there was a loyalty and that you know, sure. he talked about how, you know, he always talks about how Tom Osborne's like a father and what all this place meant to him. And I, it's kind of hard to believe that now. It, it's just, again, it's, it is what it is. This happens. It's a very common occurrence in the world. Um, but it, you know, it, does it make me think of Trev differently? <laughs> a lot differently. Yeah. Yeah. 
if so you if you go from the from the side, because I, I mean, we could go down that that line of like, you know, he he, and I certain certainly didn't realize like his um his ambition to serve like to 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 better himself as much right like i i I thought like you simple like i thought he could accomplish the things he wanted to accomplish here but it was more about nebraska instead of more of about you know where what can i do to to get to that next step but like what do you what do you think um what do you think he saw that he wasn't able to to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish whether it's for himself or for other things here that he maybe could at Texas A&M like that's been a tough one to pull apart well I don't want to I don't want to speculate I mean, if you go to Sam McEwen's story he talked about his how, how impressed he is with President Mark Welsh to A&M's president Mark mm-hmm. Welsh and what an impression that Mark Welsh made on him and he and he you know Trevor is consistent in saying that leadership matters to him and they have a and him has a strong president in place. Nebraska doesn't. Do I think that's a factor? Yeah, I think it's a factor. But Trev itself said, you know, everybody's looking for, you know, they're looking for all these reasons. And there's, there's this, he essentially said what I just said, there's no smoking gun. But I do think that's a factor that A&M has a strong president in place. Nebraska doesn't have a president in place. I think that probably affected um, Trev. I mean, of course it affected him. He's trying to, he was trying to push through this, we'll call it a six hundred million dollars stadium project. Yeah, if he feels like he didn't have support. Um, that's an, an issue. I think that. Yeah, I mean it's things like that. So, but again, you know, here's the thing: all that can be worked through. You know, I mean, that, that, those things aren't. They're not even that unique. In fact, they're not unique at all. And if, and if he felt the weight of that project, you know, and I think he, of course, he probably did. A lot of ADs would, would just simply say, we got to walk this back. I was a little ambitious. Um, and I, I just don't know if Trev's capable of doing that. But I think it, I don't think it would have been a devastating thing to him or the fan base if, if that would have had to happen. I don't know what's going to happen with that thing, but I don't. It's it's hard to imagine it going forward as planned. Yeah, but it's a whole nother conversation. Do you, well, I, I guess we can kind of bridge the gap there. Then, like, do, do you think that project was introduced too hastily? Yeah, it seems like it. I I like the I like a, again. Trev's ambitious. He ha, he has big vision. He he had that was a that was a you know that was a very aggressive vision. And he's that way. And I think he's that way for himself. Yeah. I think he has very aggressive visions. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it was, I think it was hastily done and I don't think it's going to happen. Well, listen, we're just having a sports talk here. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm also not talking to you. Like I don't talk to a lot of people who are involved in fundraising and know what's going on. I don't, I mean, the picture that's, Painted for me as one that would suggest it's a right now that it would be a, a bit of a long shot for them to be able to raise two hundred twenty five million dollars in this climate right now, especially with the AD gone. Yeah, it, it, it certainly. It, I, I'm with you. It certainly doesn't feel that way, and you're you're more in the know than I am. But like, yeah, it it definitely doesn't even feel that way on the on the surface anymore. Um, I I, I kind of put it this way earlier, like. I think one thing that we came to realize, um, or, or we have come to realize, maybe like maybe I'll ask you this: How good of a sense did you have on how he, how Trev viewed himself before this week? Now, like I think we've come to realize some things now, but like I don't, I don't know that I. Obviously, we didn't see the move coming, but also like the like the personal kind of ambition to to serve on like you know, bigger, whether it's committees or bigger positions, whether in the, in the sport of college football, uh-huh. um, like, I don't think I had a great grasp on that before really 48 hours ago. Well, you might've had a grasp and just not even known it. I, I, yeah. I think we, 
as a media group here kind of beat back that story that he, um, you know, it was now people are talking about it more openly that he had the designs on being chairman of the college football playoff committee, that he even had designs on being the big 10 commissioner. Um, now it wasn't, it seems like it was never made too big of a deal here, including by me. I mean, I just buried, I yeah. buried the college football playoff thing, the tunnel talk that we do, you know, for a subscriber only thing. We never talked about, it. I don't think, and I think it's because we didn't, we, don't, we didn't really want to believe that he was seriously looking at leaving. You know, but I, well, you it know, would have been easier I, to swallow if he took that job. <laughs> I guess, yeah. yeah. E- even after only two years, I guess it's still, uh, yeah, I guess it would have been. I, I'll grant you that. It still would have been hard. Um, you know, I think we all had this kind of picture. I never had a picture of him retiring here because I know, I know him well enough. Um, and I used to know him much more better. I mean, it, over the years, especially when he went to UNO, there's just really no reason for me to bother him. But, um, you know, I, he's very ambitious. He's aggressive. He wanted, I mean, he wanted to, he, it was either, I think it was always portrayed to me that he was going to, it was either Herb Street or Trev that was going to be the face of college football uh, for that big network. And, ESPN. and that was a, that was <laughs> devastating to him that he did get it. Um, so I knew however long ago that was 20 years ago or whatever it was that he was of that. He's, he's that way. So I should have known probably. And I did, I, I mean, I, like I said, humans are complex. I did know it, but I just thought his loyalty would, uh, would keep him here for an just a longer amount of time than two and a half years. I thought he'd give it hell for five, probably, or seven. Um, but it didn't really, I don't think that fits in, I don't think that fits into his personal agenda as, as, I, as I'm starting to understand it a little bit better. And I, and then some of now I can get into conjecture, but it's really, it's really makes so much sense. I've heard it from people that purportedly know, and I, I, it makes sense. I mean, he was a Big Ten AD. Um, now he's going to be an SEC AD, um, SEC in the big 10 or powerful entities that might break off, maybe add a few teams and they're going to need a czar commissioner and who, who would be better student, not many people than Trev Albert. And then how would Texas A&M feel about having the czar in their pocket, you know, and how would Texas feel about, Oh God, that guy just worked at Texas A&M. That's wonderful. Um, it could be this, these guys in powerful positions, the president of Texas A&M, the new AD of Texas A&M, they all are in powerful positions because they think further down the line than most people do. And th- this could be Trev, and he knows probably there's no guarantees. Of course there's not. But he also knows he's positioned. Uh, well, his resume is incredible. He has the look. I mean... I could see him being a Roger Goodell of college football. Hell, I could see him being the commissioner of the NFL. He's only 53 years old. Um, so, I, I mean, that's a lot of conjecture, but, man, it makes sense. You mentioned that part where, and he has this vision, and he's certainly sure about it. He, he has this kind of ability to, to um, you know, see trends and see things before they before they end up coming true. He's a, he's a forward thinker. He's a dreamer. Where Where did he... Obviously, the plan at Nebraska not fulfilled, like job not done. Where where did he leave it at Nebraska? How far down the road were we or are we? Oh, I mean, the stadium project, it's all so much, the conversation is so much dominated by that. Um, and there's going to have to be something done with the stadium. So I guess it'd start with that. Now, you could walk well, that. I think it's, it's I, I mean, that. we could talk about like, um, you know, he had always talked about putting money aside for when we for for when they the university has have to start paying players, um, positioning on NIL and um Oh, here's the thing. No, here's the thing. He's when I say it hurts when and when I talk about Trev, my feelings about him, he's 
he was the one to lead Nebraska. Okay. That's why some of it is it's really hurtful. He had great ideas. He was he was he was going to have Nebraska ready for whatever. Okay? And if what you're talking about is, mm-hmm. is real. I mean, if it, if it does become an institutional part of the institution to pay players, Nebraska would have been ready. He had ideas for additional money. He was always thinking about new revenue, new ways to gain revenue. Always thinking about it. And he had good ideas. So, oh, he's a he's formidable. He's really formidable. That's why I think that, I mean, and that's the thing. It's a kind of a tricky conversation because I, I do kind of applaud it for, for his, aggress- his aggressive pursuit of what he wants. I don't think, see, I don't, here's what I don't, I don't think he's, it was just, oh, I want to go to Texas A&M. I don't think it's just that. I, I, don't, I don't think it's just I want to go to Texas A&M, that I'm somehow wildly attracted to Texas A&M over Nebraska. Right. I, I think he has a grander, I think he has a bigger picture ambition in mind. And it's, and it's backed by that, that knowledge that he was interested in those two big picture jobs. Yeah. No, so I totally buy not, that. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a crazy notion at all. Um, basically what I'm getting to is did he leave Nebraska in a better spot? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard, hard for Hard for me to say that in the context of what I, what I just said. Right, I know it's really tricky. The better off without him. Um, I I guess in the sense that I think he hired a good football coach, and ads are largely defined by that hire. And I wouldn't go too far. I wouldn't go too much farther beyond that. I don't know why you would. I mean, he the volleyball day in Nebraska thing was a great idea, but. I almost give the fans as much credit as anybody. Um, I, it's just, I just think it's unfortunate that he kind of, I mean, I think he just saw his Prask as a stepping stone for him. You know, and I didn't, I guess I thought that was a possibility, but I kind of beat it back in my mind. Yep. All right, Simple. A lot to, lot to work through. Appreciate you, appreciate you coming on with us for a few minutes. Enjoy your weekend. Any, uh, any rides in the, in the future this weekend? Well, yeah, no, not right, not right now. I got to start thinking about working a little bit today. Um, <laughs> so, so no ride. It's one thirty, simple. Yeah, I got to get rolling. <laughs> it works that way. I got the five hour energy sitting here, so I'm ready to go here. All right, see you later. All right, see you, Steve Simple of HuskerOnline.com. I think you saw that. That's the full gamut right there. That's that's the whole tray. Hey, you remember like 20 minutes ago when you asked me if we should call Sipple? Yeah, that was a good idea. Man, I'm glad we called that guy. <laughs> Josh, great, great producer, Josh. <laughs> well done. To answer my own question, I think he led I, I think he left Nebraska in a better place. I do. Um but it's a tough pill to swallow because of the way it all it all went down. He probably underestimated his career ambitions. No doubt. I honestly to be to be fair to myself, and I only speak for myself, I didn't know about that. <laughs> I didn't I didn't know about that stuff. I, I, I didn't what's the media not telling us, Connor? Like, I I did think he was a lifer. I I thought mm-hmm. that. I thought that's why I thought that's part of the reason why they hired him, kind of. We need stability, right? I kind of thought he was. Definitely. And I never really second guessed that until until Wednesday morning at nine o'clock. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will come back with more next on 1620 the zone.